All right, so today I want to show you how many ball python genes exist today here in 2021 in the ball python industry. And I actually went over to morphmarket.com and over to the world of ball pythons and pulled all the genes together and made a big master spreadsheet over in Excel. And I think you'd be pretty surprised at how many genes are. It's pretty amazing. So for example, this snake that I have around my neck, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. He's a he's an eight year old male now. He just turned eight. And this is a bamboo. So if you actually took this and you bred it to something else, half the offspring would come out as bamboos or bamboo combination. There's just one single gene in the snake. And one of the advantages of ball pythons is there's like hundreds and hundreds of different genes. You know, I always made kind of made this blanket statement, yeah, there's at least 200 genes in ball pythons, but I didn't really know how many genes were actually in ball pythons until I sat down and made a spreadsheet. Let me tell you, it is a lot more than 200, which is pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, if you want to pause the video right now, you can go into the comment section underneath this video and just take a wild guess at how many genes that you think are in ball pythons. And I'm going to jump over to the internet and I'm going to show you kind of where I pulled this information, show you the big master spreadsheet that I put together with all the individual genes. Probably half of these genes I've never actually even heard of, which is pretty amazing. And then we'll finally get a total number on all the genes in the ball python industry today, according to the data that I can pull from these websites. All right, so I want to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start on this page right here. You can actually come over here to the ball python section and they have a page where they list what I thought was all the genes in ball pythons or the majority of the genes. As a matter of fact, there's a lot more genes than they have listed here. And if you actually look at the top over here, it actually says there's 215 traits, which I thought was, you know, 215 genes in ball pythons. So I figured, you know, there's about 200 genes. That's what I've been like telling everyone on the videos there's about 200 genes come to find out there's quite a few more and if you actually look at all the genes over here these are all the individual <laughs> genes that are in ball pythons over here in morphic and look at all the different genes it just makes your head spin and they actually have a key down at the bottom so for example you'll actually have incomplete dominant genes which is uh, a lot as a matter of fact most people would call these co-dominant genes because it actually has a super form so anywhere you see like like the purple number up here, that is the number of examples of the super that you'd actually find for that particular gene. So for example, for the scaleless head, you have 135 super scaleless heads that have been listed over here on Morph Market. And then you have recessives for the possible heads, the heads in orange, and then the visuals in pink. And then for the other traits, you actually have possible and like the normal. So kind of the thing, you, you kind of have to wade through all this genetic information over here at Morphmarket. So for example, you actually, the first thing you want to kind of look at is you have kind of these grayed out traits. For example, you have the Dinker ball python. There's 319 Dinkers. So the Dinker technically isn't a gene, but they list it over here that you can actually search for that term, the Dinker. It's kind of like a possible gene in a normal ball python, but you don't know if it's a gene or not. They call that a Dinker. And actually you have some other ones over here. So for example, you have a female maker. The female maker is associated with the male coroglos or the male bananas. Technically, the female maker is not a gene. So sometimes you have to kind of wade through all these. You have the male makers, you have the paradoxes. Uh, they have they have a listed pet only or other trade or <laughs> they have all these different ones. You kind of here's one that they actually list an import 313 imports and all those are not genes as far as genetic where you can actually breed them as far as you know making a recessive or a dominant or a co-dominant slash incomplete dominant. A lot of people say it's not really co-dominant; it's incomplete dominant. I say uh, traditionally a lot of people use the term co-dominant, which is pretty much the same as incomplete dominant, which means you can have two copies of the gene and make the super form. So what I actually did is I went through all these genes and I put them over in this spreadsheet over here. And I actually have different sections. And in this one, I actually listed this as the USA section and listed them as dominant, co-dominant, or recessive. And this spreadsheet is not 100% accurate. Let me tell you that right now. I was like working on this spreadsheet for like a whole day and I was like, all right, I'm just 
is done with it as far as you know trying to correct all the errors and the kind of the thing is is I actually started listing these as dominant or co-dominant depending if it had a super form so if it had a super form listed over on morph market I'd list it as a co-dominant and then come to find out some of these genes that I listed as dominant you go over to like um, you go over to the world of all pythons and some of these actually have a super form some of these that are listed as dominant are actually co-dominants but if you actually look at the whole list of all the genes over here on the USA version I listed them all over here so for example there's actually 41 recessive genes on the USA version of morph market there is 73 uh, these are the dominant genes 73 dominant genes and there's 88 co-dominant the majority of the genes are co-dominant which I thought was pretty interesting so if you look at all the numbers of all the genes over here on the USA version there's actually 202 genes over here on the USA region of morphmarket.com. What you can actually do is you can go back to Morph Market and look at another region. So for example, you can do a pull down list over here. It has three regions. You can look at the United States, Europe, or South Africa. So what I actually did is I came over here to the European Morph Market. And look, there's a, there's a whole bunch of genes over here, but it's definitely a smaller list than you'd see over on the USA version of Morph Market. So what I actually did is I actually looked at all these genes and looked for genes that were over here on the European side but not over on the USA side of Morph Market and I put those in the spreadsheet let me tell you it took a long time to put all this data together what I actually did I found that in the European section there was actually 17 genes over here that were specific to Europe that weren't found in the United States, which I thought was pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, a lot of these I've actually done. Um, I've actually done some videos on, like for example, the LC Black Magic and the Orbit and the Twister. I've done morph reviews on some of those, which is kind of interesting. And let me tell you, there's so many genes. It's still it's hard to do morph reviews on every single gene. And then what I did is I did the same thing with the South African version. So I came over here and you can actually see over here in South Africa, it definitely has fewer examples listed over on Morph Market as far as all the genes and as far as the, the pretty much the differences in the South Africa versus the Europe and the USA, I could only find one gene in South Africa that ha that was different and not listed in the USA or Europe and that was the furrow gene which is kind of interesting I haven't done a morph review on the furrow and this is I pretty much got to this point I was like all right I kind of got a handle of it and then I started thinking hey I wonder if I went over to the world of ball pythons and started looking for genes over there let me tell you this was a lot of work just to get to this point looking through all the genes and all the different versions of morph my I thought I had a pretty good handle on it and and then I went over to the world of ball pythons and this is where it kind of blew my mind over here. All the stuff that I had no clue that actually existed as far as genes. So you can actually come over here and go to the morph list and it brings up what they call the big morph list and there's actually 7,354 morphs which are different combinations that are listed over here on the world of ball pythons. What you can actually do is you can come down and click basic and look just at the individual genes. So I thought, all right, I'm just gonna look at all the individual genes over here in the world of ball pythons. But the problem is, I, I think there's a glitch or something over here. So if you get all the way down to the bottom, you know, black pastel, blade, blaze, blitz, and then you try to expand the list when you click on see more. What it actually does is it switches to the combinations and doesn't give you the individual genes so you really can't tell how many genes and what the genes are for all the individual genes so then I thought alright how do I kind of trick the system since it's kind of glitched out over here on the world of all pythons and I figured out a way to do it so take a look at this I actually came over here typed in a and went to the basic genes and then it showed me all the genes 
that start with A or have A in the first or the last name, and you didn't have to expand any of the lists. And then I went back and clicked on B and went through the whole alphabet one at a time and looked at all the different individual genes and then compared all those genes to my big master list spreadsheet with all the genes in the, the morph market, USA version, the European version, and the South African version. And let me tell you, it was an incredible amount. I didn't think I was gonna finish the video today because I had so much information. So take a look at this. So I have the USA here, Europe here, and then I have the South Africa here, and then I have genes that are only on the world of ball pythons that are not listed on any of the morph markets. And look at how many genes are over here just on the world of ball pythons. That's an incredible amount of genes. I could not believe how many genes there were. There's actually 107 genes over here on the world of ball pythons that are that I've never heard of, which is kind of crazy. And some of these names are really crazy. I don't know if you've ever heard of any of these names. So for example, they actually have the bingo. You've probably heard of the bongo. They have the bongo and the bingo. They have the bullseye. They have the cantaloupe, the DNA, <laughs> some of these names. They have the freak. They have the galaxy and the goldfinger, and it's kind of interesting. It almost, when you first see these, you think it might be a combination of genes when in fact it's actually a single ball python gene. And it's pretty amazing, all the different ones over here. That's They have the, the napalm, <laughs> they have so many crazy, the radioactive, it's pretty amazing, all the different genes. And they have one called the Sirius. Are you serious? They actually have a gene named Sirius and the Time Bomb and the White Out and the, the Yoda Ball, all these different genes over here that I've never heard of. It's kind of interesting. I actually sorted them from dominant, co-dominant, and recessive. So you see there's just a few recessives over here, a few co-dominants, and mainly dominance over here on the world of all pythons. And kind of the cool thing over here is it would actually list on the, the the gene if it was dominant, co-dominant, or recessive, so I didn't have to guess compared to looking at these other lists, where if it had a super form, I would label it as co-dominant, and if it, there was never a super form listed over on Morph Market, then I would just list it as dominant. One of the more interesting things is, you know, kind of looking through all these different combinations, take a look at this, over here on the World of Ball Pythons, under co-dominant, they actually had a gene called Z, just the letter Z. I guess if you're in Canada, what do they call that, Z? <laughs> it's the it's the Z ball. And the, if, you actually, if you actually go over here and look at the Z ball, it's, it's pretty amazing. It looks like it has a lot of potential. It is a co-dominant mutation. It has a pretty crazy pattern on some of these. And I don't know why some of these don't really take off or what's going on with a lot of genes over here, but it's pretty amazing. So if you actually take a look at all the whole the total number of all the genes in ball pythons and I say I did trim out some of the fat so so I actually trimmed out you know like the male makers and the female makers another thing I kind of trimmed out of here is uh, mainly like the pastels and the calicos you know there's like you know everyone had their own version of pastel so it's like this breeders pastel and another breeders pastel and everyone that had their own line of pastel I pretty much cut all those out and just and some of the pastels I left in so for example there was like uh, if I can actually find it. So there's the citrus pastel. But if people are listing like the pastel under their business name, like their version of pastel, it kind of diluted all the pastels. It's pretty much all the same pastels. It can be really variable from one pastel to the other. It's kind of like, you know, the, the bamboo ball python around my neck. That is Bobby. I can almost start my own line of like the Bobby line of bamboos because everybody wants offspring from Bobby and it's a really highly defined, really bright bamboo but technically it's just a bamboo like all the other bamboos technically it's not a gene by itself so I cut out a lot of the pastels a lot of people would actually put their their company name on a lot of the um, a lot of the calicos too so I cut a lot of those out too so if you actually just look at all the genes over here with between all the different websites over here I came up with a total of 327 genes over here between all these websites that 
that are in the ball python industry today. And I was trying to go through these and figure out if I had any duplicates. As a matter of fact, I got to the point where I was using the find function over in Excel and I did find some duplicates and I was kind of thinning through some of these and I kind of ran out of time. I pretty much spent all day on this going through all these genes. And let me tell you, I actually found so many genes that you have never heard of. It's pretty amazing <laughs> all these different like the pg and the ofi i mean this, a lot of this stuff i have never heard of the ice fire pretty amazing all the different genes in ball pythons as a matter of fact i was thinking maybe i'll actually upload this to uh, one of my websites and put a link under the video so if you're interested in looking at this you can actually download it. it's a pretty fascinating list with all of these genes in ball pythons all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Camila Breck asks, how old is that snake that's around your neck? And that is a very good question. So the snake that I have around my neck right here, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. And believe it or not, he just turned eight years old, which is pretty amazing. I actually bought him over on Morph Market when he was about 1,200 grams. I actually went back and looked at his weight. <laughs> he was only 1,200 grams back when I bought him. I think he's about 2,800 grams now. So he is a pretty big male. And the reason I bought Bobby is because Number one, it was probably the best example of just a single gene bamboo that I have ever seen over on Morph Market. Really super bright and well defined for a bamboo. And the other reason is, is because I bought a whole collection of females at the time. It was about four years ago when I had those females and I was looking for a male to breed with those females. And really I was looking for a gene that we didn't have here in Colorado. So when I produce a bunch of hatchlings, I wouldn't really compete with anyone at the reptile shows. That was kind of my, my thinking when I first started bringing them up. I was like, all right, I want to produce a bunch of hatchlings, but I don't want to compete with the table that's right next to me at the reptile shows. And I hadn't really seen any bamboos. As a matter of fact, when I started in ball pythons, I was looking at some of the local reptile shows and I'd say maybe I saw one or two bamboo combinations mixed in with some other genes, but I really hadn't seen any single gene bamboo hatchlings for sale at the reptile show. So that's really my decision as far as why I got into the bamboo. And let me tell you that first year I produced a whole bunch of bamboos and I had a whole table with like 60 hatchlings and everyone was coming up to my table. I'd say probably 90% of everyone was saying, what is that snake? We have never seen a bamboo ball python before. It was like I was the first one to really bring a lot of bamboos here to the reptile shows in Colorado, which is pretty awesome. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.